saying it set it up to start us recording just checking how this camera are how is the pic is the picture all or, or right or is yeah it perfect. looks great is it, is it too light in here or maybe we can give me a second i'll turn down the light a little bit just hold on yeah. so it seems to be very bright i'm i'm just skype for Many years, I think, I've normally been on Teams and, uh, and, uh, and Zoom. All right, let's see here now. Is this better or is it too dark? No, that is fine. That's perfect. All right. I wanted to thank you for taking time to speak with me today. No, it's my pleasure. Saying so, you know, always uh, interesting, uh, you know. Uh, so it's a good thing if people are interested in your your music. So it's just good that you want to take the time. Yeah, absolutely. I loved it from top to bottom. I wanted to ask you about the creative process for it. How long did it take to put the material together? Well, yeah. For, for, are you familiar with any of our previous albums, or is is this the yeah. first one you? Yes. As a matter of fact. Upon listening to this album, I enjoyed it so much, I went straight back to your back catalog. Ah, nice. Well, I'll let you know, the last album we, we released came out in 2018, and a lot of people are like saying that, oh, they spent six years, you know, we, mm -hmm. uh, we obviously didn't spend six years writing this album. Um, like, uh, I've written all the music so far, except on this album, you know, our bass player has contributed a couple of riffs but after each album, I typically take take a break from songwriting and music because it's quite um, intense. It's not like it, it's it's very heavy on on what do you call it your brain, etc. Uh, to, to actually create music, it's not that you just sit down and then uh, with the guitar on uh, on the couch and jam out songs. You know, you have to. It's really hard work. So I always take a break. I don't know when I started writing for this album, maybe 19 or something like that. But then, so it, it was ready earlier, but then, you know, COVID was around. Oh, yeah. And it was no point of releasing this w when you couldn't tour, obviously, or play yeah. shows at least. So everything was just kind of pushed forward. I think we had a pre-production and, and, and a lot, most of the songs, I don't know, ready in 21 maybe or something, or uh, it was, and then and then we had to wait I, yeah and then it was mixed i, I think it was in and, and completely mastered let me check just my my uh, i'll check on my cell phone because i have a picture from that when i visited the producer in yeah so it was it was actually september 22 it was oh. all so that's uh you know one uh, one and a half years ago because also there is a waiting time a long waiting time at least in europe on the vinyl pressing so I see, you know, so many write, people writing in reviews and like, oh, they spent six years. It has to be like, we are not the full time band, you know. We all have full time jobs, and and yeah, as I said, except for a couple of riffs, I'm the only songwriter. So then, it takes a long time to write the music. I probably wrote one. The album is one hour, and I wrote one hour and maybe fifteen minutes of music. You know, we can we can put out an album every second year if it's thirty minutes, like a lot of the other bands. Um, you have to look at the length of the album as well. It's a long album, but but I know um, I have less time to write music than I did. I have a son now, and I have a job that takes more more of my time, more than any jobs I've ever had. So um, I just you know I have a little bit time in between here and there, and try to write a little bit. And um, it, it is, it's actually, at, at least, I think it's a lot easier to write music if you can do it continuously over a long period. Uh, because then you get into kind of a songwriting zone, I call it, that you kind of, you, you, you're writing, you're trying to write music every day and eventually you just have music on your brain and you can sit on the bus and suddenly riffs come to you to just pop up in your head. But if you have to do it like maybe once a week or a couple of times per month, when you have the time, you know, late in the evening after you have been working all day and put your son to bed, it's not the same. It's, it's a lot harder to write music that way. Absolutely. And I wanted to ask you, as far as the tracks go, 
what was the hardest track for you personally to lay down in the studio? As just, I, I lost your way. As far as what? As far as, as your track? Yes. What track was the hardest for you personally to work on? Do you mean to compose or to to to, to record it, like on the instrument, or to compose? Which one was the hardest to get all the pieces together? To, together. Uh, uh, let me look at the songs here. I don't remember all of them. I have to. Uh, you know, some some songs are. Sorry, uh, some songs come together more easily than others, um, and the others are, uh, as you kind of hint to, something that maybe you. Let's say maybe you have a really cool guitar riff, but you really can't solve the vocals. How how are you, you going to put the vocals on it? Or maybe you just miss something, or you know. But at the top of my head now, maybe I'll go with the final song. So watch for me on the mountain. On that what? song, yeah, this is a, it's the final song on the album. On yeah, I, song, on my list is my favorite track on the album. The last one. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, so on that one, I had some very clear vocal lines. And those are the lines you, you hear on the album or on the track, more or less. But we couldn't really solve it with our singer. Like, he, he, try, he, 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 he tried, you know, every, every you know, he has, he has his kind of pros and cons. But that kind of singing that that song required, he wasn't capable of. At least at that point, so that was how we, we needed to bring someone else on board because I was quite certain that the lines, you know, the melody lines of the clean vocals and everything, I felt those were correct, but you just needed someone with a different personality and character in the voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about uh, the verses now because our singer is singing the choruses. But then we reached out to a good friend that we have toured with in the past, and he. Uh, he, he, you know, came on board and uh, recorded those lines. And he, he, he really, he's a really good singer. You know, he has a big, wide, wide uh, variety in expressions. Like he can sing the same melodic lines in, you know, 10 different ways. Sure. It's not about singing in pitch. I'm talking about what kind of character and, you know, what type of voice you kind of use. So that's... Then we got when he got on, we kind of solved that song. So maybe, uh, maybe that song uh, from my top of my head was the most tricky. I think uh, now and then, you know, for every album, it's, it's funny to read these reviews because we have a kind of an idea, or at least personally, for me at least. I, I don't know for the other guys, but when you when you spend a lot of time, you. you writing an album you go through different phases sometimes you think oh, this is great you know people are gonna love this and then you eventually maybe because you get fed up with the songs you start to doubt it and then you think hmm, is this actually good enough and then you know there are a few songs but for sure these this should work but then in the end it proves that the songs that a lot of people really like at least what i've seen i read some of these reviews and reactions are songs that we almost were considering not having on the album so it's it's really interesting uh how you know um how much variety there is in you know what people sure. like and not yeah absolutely and i wanted to ask you as well and tell me how the band initially formed how the band initially formed mm -hmm. well i mean how we started you know we started 20 more than 20 years ago that was, um, that was, so, so the sing, we have two singers. It, it, it's not, it wasn't kind of the intention at the start. It was, um, it just kind of uh, came together that way. Um, so um, it was me and Andreas. So Andreas is, he, he's the guy who sings the black, me black metal vocals, by the way. Uh, we have more kind of growls and death metal. That's the other guy who's singing that. But me, but the guy who's singing the black metal vocals, um, Andreas, me and him started this band. 
I was uh, at a music school and we every every student had to record one song in the school's studio. And then, you know, he had always been a, a metal fan. I had never been into metal, but I thought I I I played in other bands, quite hard music like metal core and stuff like that. So I told him for like kind of fun, you know, one one day I'm going to write the metal song so you can sing on it because he was kind of like a hobby he liked to scream a little bit when we had some beers. He had a little bit of technique for it. And then, you know, uh, when, when, the, uh, when, when this um, project uh, at the school came, I thought, okay, why don't I try to write a metal song? And then I wrote a song and it ended up on our first album, actually. Well, first on our, it, it came out on our first EP and then we wrote some more songs and we thought, hey, this is actually sounding quite good. And then we thought we need some clean vocals here. And then we brought on Sindre, who's the guy, who's the other singer. That's how we ended up with two singers. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be, like, it was just a, supposed to be a one-off kind of product, project. Um, and yeah, but so we spent the whole summer in the studio and eventually we had an EP. We sent it out to different labels. We got actually a lot of really positive feedback uh, from a lot of major labels uh, also. And then, um, the, the, the summer after, we went back into the studio. We, we recorded our second EP called Wounds. And after that, we got signed. But so, and that was in 2005. But so that's the background. It started kind of as a, as a um, school project. And then the other members that are now on board, they have been, they have joined them at different times. Uh, like, the solo guitar player Shetil, he joined in 2009. I think he, he joined before he played on our second album, Mantra, and then he joined permanently. And then our current drummer, he joined in 2018 when our previous drummer had to quit uh, because, you know, various personal stuff. Uh, and then our current bassist, uh, he joined in 2013, I think, when our then bass player was actually going to the US to become a pilot. But wow. he had, so the, yeah, so he had to leave the band and he was going to kind of just, he was just going to be there like two years, he told us, but then it turned, it turned into four. And then, you know, at some point you can't, and then he, our current basis was to kind of, uh, what do you call it? It was um, not a permanent re replacement, but temporary. Right. But at some point you kind of had like, we just said, look, this is just, we, we have to move on here or something like that. And then, yeah. Then we had um, Alexander, who's his name, who's kind of the permanent one, uh, because yeah, our, our old old basis was just too busy. So, but it yeah. So the other members have kind of joined later on. It, it's three members that are still in the band. The three kind of founders, or yeah, if you count Sindra as well, we have been in the band since day one. Hold on one moment. Alexis, thought, turn off alarm. I, my Alexis remind me about our interview. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, I also wanted to ask you uh, if you could speak on your history and at what age you began to uh, hone your craft as a musician. I, I went to music school when I was young, like my, my uh, mom and dad. I don't remember exactly how, but they, I got a guitar at some point and they sent me to music school to learn to play and I really hated it. It was the worst. I was, uh, what do you call it? I mean, let me Google this. Uh, I was dreading, dreading to go to that school every every week. And uh, it's really unfortunate when I think about it now because I could have learned a lot more than what I did. I didn't practice or anything. But then later on, I, I started a band with some guys. We started playing grunge, and then eventually we moved into more and more hard music. And that's and I, yeah. And then I didn't I didn't really practice then either. But I kind of practiced at least when we played with the band. It was actually when I started this metal band in Maine that I'm in now. Um, when I was in, in, when I was uh, twenty in two thousand and three, um, that I actually had to practice because a lot of the music I was writing I wasn't actually capable of playing because I didn't I didn't use the guitar when I wrote music I just used my head and my mind to kind of compose and I was writing stuff down only occasionally I would use the guitar to kind of check 
check out the riffs, you know, what I heard in my head, how to play it. But I, I wouldn't pray, play it from the guitar. So I had to practice a lot. That's how I, I kind of, I had some years where I practiced a lot, technique, etc. But yeah, so the, um, so I started, as I said earlier, in other types of music. I also wrote music in those bands, but uh, it's in a vein that I became kind of the permanent. That, that's the band I've been writing the most music, obviously. And uh, I wanted to ask you, what is the best way to get a physical copy of the album or a merchandise that you have? In the US? Yes. There are there are people, there are uh, ways to get it in the US. Miami Metal Merchants or something, that's at least one place you can buy it. Because I told, uh, I told our label to set this up. Uh, and then we have actually had others in the US who, have, who has reached out to us to they want to buy, you know, like a larger quantity, I guess, and have it shipped over. So hopefully our label can fix that. But uh, Met Miami Metal Merchants, let me see if I can, I think that's the name. You can, of course, buy it from us. And a lot of people have, by the way, a lot of people have bought it from us from the US. I feel, I feel a little bad about the shipping cost, but it's actually nothing we can do about it. Yeah, I'll send you the link here. You can see, uh, uh, you can buy it for $18 uh, at Miami Metal, Metal Merchants. So hopefully that shipping shouldn't be that bad. I'll, I'll put the link uh, in the chat so you can check it out. I think you can find it. You can find it on Amazon and those places as well, actually. Very good. And uh, lastly, I wanted to ask you, if you could give a message to your fans, what would that message be? Well, I mean, uh, check out our new album, obviously. Check out Sol Solemn. Uh, it's now out. It's one of our music. A lot of variety, I think. I think it's an album you can listen to for a long time. You know, if you like it, let us know. Tell your friends, tell everyone you know about this. Help us to grow the band. Hopefully, we will see you soon somewhere uh, from a stage. And, uh, you know, we'd love to go to the US one time to play. We'd love to have you. I wanted to thank you for taking time to speak with me today. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. And please let me know when, when this will be posted. Is this coming uh, on YouTube or somewhere? Or is it where, where is this pod? This will go on YouTube. Fantastic. Well, if you can let me know when it's out, that would be great. Absolutely. Well, thank oh, you, yeah. Brandon. You have a great rest of your day. Same to you. Have a good uh, Sunday evening. Okay. All right. Cheers. Bye.